Playtime is over, yes, and it's time for you to create impact. I've stolen the catchphrase of my guest for today, and I'll tell you a little bit more about her in a few moments. But today we want to talk about creating impact. If you've ever heard Brendan Burchard speak, he says that when we're no longer here, we ask three questions. Or there are three questions that we got to think about while we're living. Did I live? Did I love? And did I matter? That last one, did I matter, really speaks to us wanting to be remembered, wanting to create and leave a legacy. When we are no longer around, we want people to be able to say things about us that we were a person of significance. Now, while I'm living, how do I create that significance? How do I create that impact? That has to be intentional. It's not something that happens by accident. It's something that happens by design each and every day. And you've got to learn. You've got to figure out what are your best gifts and skills and talents and what are the things that you can do to make a ridiculously big contribution to the world. Even if it's to only one person's life, what are the things that you can do to contribute? What are the things that you can do to matter? What are the things that you can do to leave a legacy? What are the things that you can do to create impact? That's what we want to talk about today. We've got on our show, Cheryl Wood. Welcome to another 3P Success Session. I'm RK3. Purpose, power, profit. It's time for another 3P Success Session with your host, Robert Kennedy III. RK3, are you ready? It's time. All right, here we go. Thanks so much for joining us once again for another 3P Success Session. This is Robert Kennedy the Third RK3, and I'm glad that you guys were able to join me again today. We've been having some awesome guests. We've had people that have been sharing just ridiculous stories of perseverance, stories of success, stories of impact, and that's really what we are here for. That's really what we want to talk about, how you can use your gifts, your skills, your God-given talents, the things that are birthed into you in order to create impact in the world? How can you contribute? How can you serve in a ridiculously big way and just have fun doing that thing? You know, you, all of us have circumstances, all of us have situations, but it's really your attitude and the things that you choose to do every day that make the difference. So I love to share the stories of people that have really taken this thing up and are making a difference in their world day by day, moment by moment, second by second. Everybody, I want to introduce to you my guest today. She's an awesome lady. Let me tell you something. Even if you've never met this lady in person, if you've ever had the opportunity to read her posts on Facebook or her status updates, you will immediately get the sense that this lady is just no nonsense. Let me tell you something. If you are one of those people who chills out with a comfort zone, you do not want to hang out with this lady. If you are... If if your buddy is status quo, you don't want to hang out with this lady, okay? If you are somebody who is friends with same old, same old, you don't want to hang out with this lady. Her name is Cheryl Wood, and she not only empowers, but she is powerful, and I'm glad that I'm able to speak with her today. So after I've said all of that, Cheryl... How are you today? <laughs> hey, see, there's no pressure, right? You, you say all of that good stuff. Now there's pressure. I, I got to bring it. <laughs> well, you know what? You do that naturally. And I'm going to tell everybody uh, these four letters here because this is kind of your catchphrase. And I'm going to say these four letters and I'm going to ask you to tell them what it stands for. P-T-I-O. P-T-I-O. Play time is over. It has become a movement, Robert, a movement all of its own. You know how sometimes as entrepreneurs and business owners, we put something out into the universe and, yeah. you know, because it resonates with us, with our spirit personally. And we never know how that idea is going to take off and yeah. have an impact on other people. So the playtime is over movement has become just that. I did not expect for it to take off. I didn't expect for people to gravitate toward it the way they have. But I'm not kidding you. Every day I wake up and I have at least two or three posts on Facebook from someone who says, I woke up this morning and I could hear Cheryl Wood in my ear saying, playtime is over. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you. And I'm fired up. <laughs> That's it. And, and you know what? That thing, it, it, it fires you up just to hear 
that yeah. statement. I, don't, I have never even heard you say it, but I'm reading it, okay? <laughs> and it, it puts something inside of you. I mean, there's definitely an energy that comes through. So, I mean, what was the thing going on with you that allowed you to decide, okay, this is not just something I'm just going to say one time. I'm going to use this thing because this thing's got legs, it's got power, it's got, it's got wheels, it's going to take us somewhere. What, what made you decide to start using that? I love the way you word that. This thing has legs. Yeah. Um, you know, I, it was really self-talk. And that's the funny part about yeah. it uh, in my business. A lot of times, well, first of all, every day on Facebook, I put a fearless entrepreneur tip. Yeah. And I get all of this dynamic response. And people are like, oh, she went to church on me today. Or amen. I needed to hear that. Right. right. All this great feedback. But a lot of times, Robert, it's just me talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just sharing that totally. with the world because I figure if it helped me for that day, if I was having a moment of discouragement or difficulty or challenge about pressing forward in my business, then no doubt it's going to help someone else. And that's usually how it works. So the playtime is over motto really was something that developed within me first. And every day I would wake up and open my eyes and say, all right, Cheryl, are you going to whine about what you don't have? Are you going to complain and moan and groan about what's not happening in your business? Right. Or are you going to take advantage of the life, the breath that you have and the opportunities that are out there that you have to go and get? Right. And so I would start saying to myself every day, all right, sister, playtime is over. Don't waste another second, another minute, another hour, another day talking about what you want. Go out and get what you want. And so by me talking to myself, having that internal self-talk, I was then able to share that with the world. Awesome, awesome. So I want to talk today specifically about creating impact, you know, mm -hmm. and really, as I said at the beginning, each of us has, has these things, these, these gifts, that, that are, these skills and talents that come easily to us, that come a little bit easier than some, some other people. And they, I believe, truly believe that those are clues to, to design your life or the things that you can do to create uh, significance or impact or, or contribute to the world in a really great way, right? So the thing about it is that there's no college degree for this, right? Yeah. How does somebody happen upon this or recognize this in themselves? So, you know, let me not even ask it that way. I'm going to go back and I'm going to make this specific to you. You're doing something today that there's no real college degree for, okay? How did you know specifically that this was the thing that you were meant to do or the way that you could serve the world? Great question. I think a big part of it is just, number one, having a strong desire, a conviction about wanting a different reality for your life. So that's where it started for me. I, I was tired of punching a time clock in corporate America. I was tired of dropping my three babies off at six in the morning and not picking them back up until six at night. I was tired of going to a job every day that, yes, it paid the bills and I was great at it, but it didn't nurture my spirit. It didn't make me feel alive. It didn't position me to create a legacy in life. And it certainly didn't position me to create generational wealth. So I, I got tired of that and I wanted a different reality. So it started there with that. That was kind of the first seed. And then as I continued, I said, well, how do I get started? That is huge. Mm -hmm. Just get started. Do something different than what you've been doing. And usually you will eventually be detoured into the thing that is your real purpose. So if I take you back five years ago, I wasn't a speaker. I wasn't a business coach. I wasn't an author. I didn't have any of those titles just five years ago. Wow. But I was working a full-time job and I just got started. How did I get started? I actually had a t-shirt business, this little itty bitty t-shirt business out of my basement in my home. Mm. And it was called Moms Are the Best. <laughs> and I did marry that t-shirt business to what I was passionate about, which was motherhood and really a celebration of women and all the many hats that we wear on a daily basis. So I had these t-shirts with all of these slogans, inspirational slogans to upbuild and uplift women and moms. Well, Robert, I didn't know that two years into that, it was going to detour me into speaking because mm -hmm. I had never been in Toastmasters. I've never been in anybody's speaker's course or training. So I didn't know that that was in the cards for me. But because I started somewhere doing something that was outside of my comfort zone, something that was different that I wasn't familiar with, 
it allowed me to become detoured into my true passion, which is speaking and coaching and training. Um, and so really kind of how it went down was two years into doing the t-shirt business, I would go out, I was still working a full-time job, but on the weekends I would go out and I would buy a vendor table at an event or at a flea market or whatever, fashionista event, and I would sell these t-shirts. And I'm going to be very honest. Yeah. Sometimes I pick some of the worst events to vend at. Like I would pick these flea market events outside at some school in the middle of the parking lot. And I'd be sitting in 100 degree weather wondering why the heck am I out here selling t-shirts, right. sweating hoping somebody buy one t-shirt so I don't have to go back and tell my husband that I came back home broke, busted, and disgusted just like I was when I left this morning. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't understand why, but I knew that I couldn't do what I already knew. I couldn't do what I was already familiar with. I couldn't do what I had already been doing for all of my life and expect something different. Right. Well, guess what? A year and a half into doing that, I got an unexpected phone call. See, this is what happens when you show up, when you take the first step, opportunities will show up. Right. Maybe not when you want them to, but at the right time, at the right moment. A year and a half, almost two years into the journey, I get a phone call unexpectedly from someone who says they're calling from Morgan State University. And they said, we heard about you. You're this mompreneur. You're selling these t-shirts while you're still working a job. You're trying to build this legacy. We do a conference every year for women, and we get 200 to 300 women who come in to this conference. We want you to come in and speak and teach other women and moms how to start businesses. Now, after I burst out laughing, I said, clearly, you dialed the wrong number oh. because, because I'm not a speaker. <laughs> I sell T-shirts. Wow. That's what I do. I'm not a speaker. And they said, no, no, Miss, we're, we're trying to reach you, Miss Wood. We, we, we know. We heard about you, and we think it would be a great example to come in and show women what it looks like to get started. Right. So when I went to that event, my palms were sweating. I couldn't even shake anybody's hand when I went into the room. I just was like, how you doing? Hello. How, how you doing? Right. <laughs> I was so nervous. My heart was racing. I had never been on anybody's speaker stage anywhere. Right. But sometimes the opportunity will show up and you have to walk through that door because that door may never appear again. So I did it. And let me tell you, Robert, after that event, that first speaking event, I knew with everything in my core, everything in my being, that that is what I was destined to do. Like literally I was created for that. And so from that point forward, it was just forward movement towards intentionally pursuing a speaking career. But imagine if I had thrown in the towel a year and a half, two years before that because wow. I was tired of sitting out in the sun and didn't want to sell T-shirts. I would have never gotten to that place of having that door of opportunity open where now, here we are five years later into the journey, I'm recognized as an international speaker and coach and traveling the world doing what I love. Awesome. So I'm going to put you on the spot for just a moment here. Go right ahead. So a lot of people... Uh, they, they've got this thing. They, they know that they're mad about where they are. They know mm -hmm. that you know, maybe not the same situation, but they have their own hot sun experience, right? <laughs> and they just don't like what they're doing. Let me ask you, if you did not have the job, let's say that you lost the job, right? What would you have, what step would you have taken? What, what is the thing that you would have done that possibly would have led you to right where you are now? What would you, what would you have done a little bit differently if you didn't have the same scenario? If I didn't have the job, I mean, I would still do something different. Right. I, I don't think you can get anywhere different until you do something different. Right. So if you're sitting at home and you don't have a job, okay, well, maybe right now what you're doing is you're looking in the help wanted section trying yes. to find a new job. But maybe instead of doing that, you need to be creatively creating your own opportunity, mm -hmm. trying to figure out how do I start my own business? How do I use the gifts, the talents, and the skills that I have internally and intuitively mm -hmm. to be able to create my own empire instead of putting myself right back in the same position of getting a job where I'm building somebody else's empire? Awesome. Awesome. I love that. And, and I wanted to ask you that because, I mean, as you were kind of talking, I shouldn't be multitasking, but I did for a second. <laughs> Sorry. I, I flipped back over to your website, right? And I see YCenterEssence.com, Radio.com, Radio 1, Fox 5, News Channel 8. I'm seeing all of these places 
that are not just mom and pop shops. These are recognized media places or, or institutions or organizations. You know, how do you, is, did this just happen accidentally? Or once you decided, look, playtime is over, right? I'm going to go and do certain things. How did you position yourself to now get, gain the visibility so that you can create even more impact? Yeah, you know what? It's consistency. Yeah. Period. When I started out five years ago, nobody knew me. Nobody knew who the heck Cheryl Wood was. I was punching a time clock, going to work, getting a paycheck like everybody else, living literally paycheck to paycheck. Right. Um, I didn't have any media visibility. I didn't know anybody who could introduce me to this person. Who I didn't have any of that. I didn't have any angel investors no business loans. It was just me with a desire to do something different and to take the first step. But it was with consistency that allowed me to be able to show people, not tell them, because a lot of times we get into the space of talking about it. Oh, this is what I want. I want to be recognized, a recognized speaker. Or I want this or I want that success. No, you can't talk about it. You got to work for it. You show people through your actions that you are serious about it. And when you consistently demonstrate the actions, that's when people start to take notice and say, oh, okay, she's not or he's not just talking about doing something new and big. And big and different but he or she is taking the action and people that will resonate with people when you are consistent so I consistently sold the t-shirts until the speaking opportunity came and once the speaking opportunity came and I realized that was the gift that I wanted to pursue guess what for the past three years I've been on a serious grind yeah. consistently uh, posting on social media, consistently educating and informing people, even when I didn't get paid for it, consistently going out and speaking, even when nobody could pay me for it, when I had to put my own gas in my car and pay for my own hair and my dress to show up and look like the pro that I wanted to be recognized at. So it's it's consistency, consistently sending out newsletters, consistently going to networking events, even when I came home from the full-time job and didn't want to go. And wanted to just stay home with my husband and my three kids and chill out in my pajamas and eat pizza. Mm. I had to say, all right, no, I got to freshen up. All right, I just got off work at 5. I got to get to this networking event at 6.30. And I'm going to be there till 9.30. Yeah. Because I had to create a buzz about who I was and what my mission was. So it's, it's consistency. Awesome, awesome. So now you're talking about, you just kind of went into you leaving the full time and coming home and making certain decisions. Now you're in the place that you're, at least you're on your journey to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you do daily? What are some of the things that you do day to day to continually stay in that frame of mind, really target that mindset of success each day? What are some of the practical things that you do every day? Number one, I talk to myself. Now, Robert, I don't answer myself, <laughs> but I talk to myself. Yes. <laughs> As soon as I open my eyes for the board and I'm like, all right, Cheryl, today is going to be an amazing day. You are a winner. You are a magnet for greatness. You're a magnet for abundance and prosperity. But you can only get that if you are out there working for it. Right. And then I don't just sit behind my computer. I No, I get out and I actually have a schedule of what I'm going to accomplish for that day. And I think sometimes as entrepreneurs, we think we can just sit behind the computer and mm. post something on social media and send out a couple emails. Well, that's not bringing money into your, your bank account. See, I, I need money in my bank account so I can pay my bills so I can stay a full-time entrepreneur and not have to go back and punch a time clock. So that means I have to be very intentional with how I spend my time. So, for example, every day, usually between, I say, 9 to 9.30 now that my kids are back in school, I will post my fearless entrepreneur tip. After that, Robert, I don't have to be on social media for the rest of the day unless I choose to. Right. But that is my commitment for the day. Post early in the morning, right after I drop my kids off or right before I drop them off. That's my post. Now, let's get to work. Okay, so for instance, this morning, I dropped the kids off, went straight from the kids to a business meeting that I had with someone who's going to be a participant in my upcoming conference. From that, came home, had to curl my hair, get ready for this Google Hangout, and this is intentional. <laughs> I'm now intentionally spending the next hour with you so that now, guess what? My message is opened up to your audience. Right. And maybe someone from your audience will say, I like what she brings to the table. Maybe I can contact her. Maybe I can coach with her. Maybe I can buy her products. So that's intentional. Then this evening, okay, after I hang up with you, I'll go get my kids. I know I have to do dinner time, bath time, homework. And then at 7 o'clock, I have my own teleconference that I host with 
my sizzle speakers because I do a 10 week speaker intensive training. Right. So everything is intentional and it's written down in blocks of time so that I know what I have to get done. I don't leave anything up in the air. Oh, I wake up today and just, hmm, I don't know what I'm going to do. No, I know what I'm going to do. And I know what's going to bring in revenue. I know what pieces I'm doing that's going to get me uh, exposure, continued exposure, such as this Google Hangout. Right. So it's intentional, being intentional with my time. Right. So the, you, you brought up something really great just now. So a lot of people, well, you brought up two points that I want to hit. A lot of people sit behind the computer and they ty type <laughs> stuff and they expect to get exposure that way. But then you also talked about being really clear about what are your revenue producing activities. Acti yeah. So in coaching somebody or in advising somebody, is there a percentage or, you know, how, how do you tell them to choose which activities are more important than the other? There's some things that are not going to bring in money, but you still got to do them. How do you, how do you advise them in that regard? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I don't know if I can really say a percentage other than saying that 20% of your efforts should generate 80% of your revenue. I right. mean, I think that's kind of a typical thing that most entrepreneurs know, but I don't think most entrepreneurs execute that very ah, well. That's the word. <laughs> so if you know that it's the opposite and you're slaving and working 80%, to bring in this 20% of your revenue projections, then you know that you need to shift some things and do some things differently. And that may just, again, be really buckling down and deciding, okay, I've got to block out times for specific things. I am only going to be on social media for 30 minutes. Unless social media is really bringing in some clients, that's not where you need to be spending your time. You need right. to be spending your time phone calls, you need to be spending your time uh, meeting with decision makers who can hire you to come in and can give you a check. Mm. Uh, you need to be doing the things that bring in revenue. So I think a lot of times it's easier to do the things that are sexy about yeah. our business. So let me give you an example. For me, speaking on stage is sexy. I'm like, oh, I get to be on the stage. I got the little lapel mic. and You know, that's real sexy. Yeah. But it's the behind the scenes stuff that's not sexy that oftentimes brings in those multiple streams of revenue that help me to keep myself afloat in business. So it's sending the newsletters. That's not sexy. I have yeah. to sit down and write that stuff out. Nobody's watching me while I'm doing that. Right. I have to post the social media posts. I have to do the blogging. I, I have to do the marketing. I have to pick up the phone and do cold calling. I have to send out direct mail. I, those are not those are the not sexy parts of being in business, but keeps business coming in, keeps money coming in. Mm -hmm. And if you stop any of those things, if you stop educating and informing, sending newsletters, doing blogs, keeping a buzz created, meeting with people, cold calling, marketing, if you stop any of those things just because you got one client or two clients, guess what? If those clients are gone tomorrow, then what? You can't put all your eggs in one basket. You have to have all of these different streams of revenue coming in, and you've got to be doing the work behind the scenes to consistently allow you to generate revenue uh, through all of these different avenues. Right, right. So here's the, the thing that is a block for a lot of business owners and people in general as well that, that are trying to create something for themselves. They feel icky or salesy <laughs> when they have to either talk about themselves, number one, yeah. or say, look, this is my product and this is you know, how I can help or what I do. How how do you yourself, if you have that fear, get past that? Or how do you suggest that people get past that in order to be able to create impact? Again, that's another great question. And it's something that I struggled with for a very long time when I first started, especially with speaking, because oftentimes when I first started speaking, I wasn't getting paid to speak. Mm. They would, you know, they love what I did, but you know, you know how to go into that. Oh, but we don't have a budget. <laughs> <laughs> sure you do. It's just zero. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you can sell from the stage. I yeah. didn't know nothing about selling from no stage when I first started out. So it was very uncomfortable for me because I had, I was happy that I finally found the thing that I was energized about, that I was right. enthusiastic about. So I just wanted to go and talk. I just wanted to speak. I wanted to pour into people and make people feel good. I felt good. But that was not paying the bill. So I had to learn how to sell. And I think 
there's this um, there's this disconnect that a lot of entrepreneurs have where they feel like if I'm selling, I'm not serving. Right. Well, technically, you need to do both. There has to be a balance. Yes, you serve, but you have to sell as well. Because if you don't, then guess what? You're going to be in the same position as the people that you claim you're trying to help. Exactly. So they're broke, busted, and disgusted. You can't be broke, busted, and disgusted too. Yep. How are you going to show them, you know, new ideas and creativity and innovation and how to move forward in their life or their business or their journey if you're not doing that? And this is what I tell my clients, especially the women who come in, into uh, my individual coaching practice. I say, look, think of it this way. Let, for, for me as a speaker, let's say I go into a stage and I go into this room and there's, you know, 200 women in the room and I blow them away with my presentation. I mean, I get them fired up about their possibilities and all the things that they can do in life. And I do that and I awaken something within them mm. that excites them. And then I walk away and I don't give them any opportunity to extend that experience with me. Right. How selfish to open someone up to the possibility of something different yeah. and then you simply cut them off. Wow. So that's how you've got to think about it. When I don't extend my services and my products in a way for people to continue learning and growing from me, it really is an act of selfishness for me not to do that because I have now opened their eyes to something new, something that's a possibility for their life, a difference and then I simply cut them off. When you don't sell, when you don't ask for the sale, it's really an act of selfishness. Wow. And once I start thinking about it that way, everything shifted. Oh, I had no problem asking for the sale now, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, that is, I mean, that, I love that, that phrasing. I love putting it that way because uh, it, that's really a, a, an area that a lot of business owners, a lot of people just, they struggle with. And, and they oh, yeah. end up, like you said, broke, busted, and disgusted, just really <laughs> sitting down and not doing, not serving in a big way because they are so conflicted about the whole selling, serving, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Juxtaposition or whatever. That was too big of a word. I don't like using big words like that. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway so here's my last uh, couple of questions here. Um, now, you are able to work or you able to move between small business and big business okay some people when you talk about target market they tell you to target this specific person this type of business but you're able to do both you came from a t-shirt business and now you're connecting with larger corporations as well as small how did you how, how were you able to, to, to refine that or, or, or create that capability within yourself uh, well, I, I think that identifying a target audience, a target market, is still it's critical. Mm -hmm. um, but I always think there will be what we call a splatter effect. Right. So you target 85% of your efforts, your marketing, your branding on a specific core market, but there's always going to be somebody else that's impacted. So, for example, I speak primarily for women, women entrepreneurs who are in their first five years of business. That is still 85% of my audience because what they are going through, what they're struggling with, resonates with me because I've been there. Right. And those are the people that I really want to serve and I really want to help. That's what makes me feel good in my spirit. And I think that's the only way that you can continue to be successful in business is if you always stay true to what feels good in your spirit. Now, that's not to say that I don't speak to anyone else. So, for instance, just last week, I got hired to speak uh, at PMI, which is Project Management Institute. Mm -hmm. So I walk in the room, and the room is packed with men. Right. Men suited up, Caucasian males. I'm the only African-American woman in the room. And then there are only two other women in the room. Right. Everybody else is males. So that was, in effect, a splatter effect. Someone saw my message, knew that I taught on leadership and an attitude of excellence and felt that it would be good for that audience of males. Mm. Same with youth. I go in sometimes and I speak for colleges or universities or local schools. So there's always a splatter effect. That's that 15 percent. But the 85 percent I'm very clear on. And so even with the corporations, uh, really that's kind of a splatter effect. Um, just in June I spoke for Verizon. But it was for a women's empowerment session for Verizon. Right. So it still partially was connected to my target audience. Granted, they aren't business owners, but they're career professionals. And a lot of the things that we teach entrepreneurs really does carry over into 
corporate America. Those mm. same characteristics that you have to have, an attitude of excellence, strong leadership skills, being willing to take risks, being willing to step outside of your comfort zone. A lot of those things still carry over into being the best career professional that you can. So I think it's, it's critical that you identify someone that you're talking to because if you don't identify someone, no one knows that you're talking to them. Exactly. But when you hone in on that specific audience, you will have that splatter effect of other people who say, I like your message and I think it will benefit my audience. And that, again, that's another uh, stream of revenue. Awesome, awesome. So I am, I don't want to end abruptly here, but <laughs> there are, I mean, literally, there we can talk for hours on, on yeah. this stuff because right now, I don't know if people are getting this, but you're dropping gold here, really. And I want people to be able to connect with you further to hear some of this stuff. So tell me a little bit about what you've got going on. I know you've got a conference coming up. I want you to share a little bit about that and tell us uh, how we can connect with you further. Yeah, I'm continuing to spread my message of really being fearless enough to go out there and get what you want in life and in business. Um, it, I have been the walking, talking billboard for what that looks like. Right. Uh, again, if you go back five years ago from the t-shirt business and, and working a full-time job to now growing this international empire where I'm claiming success on my own terms, that, that didn't happen overnight and it didn't happen by accident. It was very intentional and very strategic. Uh, so I continue to spread that message through speaking and through my private coaching. Um, as well as things like my 10-week speaker intensive. Uh, but the thing that I'm really gearing up for now is my two-day women in business conference. It is my first two-day conference, mm. which to be honest, Robert, I've been running from this thing for three years because <laughs> it's a lot of work, a lot of time, energy, effort, finances, and getting butts in the seats is challenging. But I believe that our greatness is always on the opposite side of our fears. Right. So it's been something that I've been a little fearful of and that's why I'm doing it. And that's taking place October 31st and November 1st. It's a Friday and a Saturday in Arlington, Virginia um, at the Double Tree by Hilton Hotel. And we have a great lineup of speakers who are going to pour into these women who are in business to help them really become more strategic, become more intentional, learn how to take risks, learn how to build a community and build relationships and build their infrastructure and create content and again, build that consistency so that they can actually get the results that they are working so hard for. It okay. doesn't make sense to just work hard and never get results. Okay. Um, and so I'm excited about that. So it's ptioconference.com as the website for that. Okay, awesome. I was just about to ask you that. It's okay to name drop. Tell us a little bit about some of the, tell <laughs> us some of the names of the speakers that are going to be there. Yeah, well, you know what? This is what I do. I, I'm one of those people, I feel like some of the superstars, you know, who have the big name, they already have theirs. Right. They have their money. They have their fame. So when I give people an opportunity, it's people who are everyday, ordinary women like me who deserve their five minutes of fame. Mm -hmm. So these are local women in business who have reached really uh, new heights in their business, and now they're pouring back into other women right here in the local community. So we have uh, Dr. Monica Oganda. She's coming in from Atlanta, Georgia. Awesome. I have Patsy Anderson, who is here locally. She's going to be speaking about being richer, smarter, and happier. Uh, Sheree Cofield out of uh, Owings Mills, Maryland. She's going to be talking about reducing stress so that you can maximize success. So most of our people who are speaking are local local people who started at the rookie status just like I did and yeah. over time have grown their empire. I want to show these women real life experiences and examples of what you can do when you nurture your possibilities with intention. That is awesome. Thank you so much. I'm excited about the conference. I'm excited about everything that you're doing. I'm excited about just the energy that emanates from you in online or wherever you are. Just people are excited to be around you and I thank you so much for just taking up the mantle and putting that stuff out into the world, not just for women, but for, for men, for people, for youth that need direction and people that are just mm -hmm. looking to create something special and something different. And the word that we're talking about today, looking to create impact and, and, and a legacy for themselves yes. in the world. And so I thank you for, for sharing that with us today. And listen, guys, I want you to subscribe to the 3P Success Sessions. We've had some great guests. We've got, I mean, there's been gold that's been shared here. And if you're not coming to this podcast with a notepad and a pen, you're missing out on some stuff. So I want you to do that. I want you to subscribe 
and go to robertkennedy3.com. We are on stitcher.com as of this week, and we are also on iTunes. So I want you to download, subscribe, share on social media so that other people can also hear, hear, the, hear this, these messages of hope, empowerment, and really just how to create impact in the world as well. All right, so that's it for today. Robert Kennedy the third RK3. My guest has been Cheryl Wood. Visit her at Cheryl Empowers or Cheryl Wood Empowers dot com. Go check her out. PTIO Playtime is over. Conference dot com and uh, sign up for that conference, and you are gonna be in for something special. I want to tell you, find your purpose, live with power, and you know what? You do those things, and eventually you're gonna create more profit. Have an awesome day.